show. Brothers and sisters, friends, enemies, and neutrals, in this presentation today, which will consist primarily of reading from a transcript of legislative debate, but not to get ahead of myself on that, let me read you a relatively recent column from the Lincoln Journal Star. It was written January 20th of 2020, which was the last year that I would be in the legislature before being term limited out for a second time. Here's what was written, and I'm not going to comment along the way. Ernie Chambers plunged the legislature into a dramatic moment of silence and frozen attention last week when he spoke about bigotry, racism, prejudice, and the rise of white supremacy. The swastika vandalism at a Jewish synagogue in Lincoln decried by Senator Anna Wishart prompted the moment. The legislature has heard Chambers speak on the topic of prejudice and racism many times, but this was different. Senators, some standing, turned around to focus on him. It was absolutely quiet in the chamber and no one moved. Perhaps an early reminder that the legislature is going to lose that voice at the end of this year as Chambers is term limited out for the second time. But it's a voice that still will need to be heard somewhere, somehow. Borrowing from West Side Story, there's a place for him. This transcript, the excerpts, were from a 1970s debate we had in the legislature when President Ronald Reagan, I almost said Bush, I don't want to blame somebody who didn't do anything, was going to vi visit Bitburg Cemetery. The head of Germany, Conrad Kohl, K-O-H-L, was in political trouble. He needed some bolstering, so he wanted Ronald Reagan to come to Germany. Now, Bitburg Cemetery had over 2,000 people buried there, a lot of German soldiers, most of them Nazis, but also a large contingent of SS, Schultzstaffel, the elite group who operated the death camps. They were buried there. But what also was near that cemetery that people didn't discuss, but I did because I read the newspaper. America was being asked to stockpile, or I guess you could say, place some missiles at a missile site, which was very near Bitburg Cemetery. Rather than have Reagan go to that missile site and create a kind of appearance to his visit of trying to undergird Germany's militarism, he would visit Bitburg Cemetery, which was right next to it. I was very opposed to what he was doing. And without further ado, I'm going to read from this transcript. The chair recognizes Senator Chambers. It was a resolution that I offered to the legislature to condemn Reagan's visit and join the House and the Senate of the U.S. Congress in suggesting or insisting that he not pay that visit. Naturally, he disregarded all of it. The chair recognizes Senator Chambers. Mr. Chairman and members of the legislature, this is a melancholy and gloomy topic. It relates to something that will be a spot on the history of humanity as long as human beings walk on this earth. And remember, I was being called anti-Semitic by Jews at that time in Nebraska. And the national ADL had condemned me as being anti-Semitic. Who offered the resolution? Ernie Chambers, the ones who is referred to by Jews and condemned 
as being anti-Semitic. And by the way, when I ran for the chairmanship, they lobbied the legislature against me getting that position. The World Herald even condemned what they were doing. That kind of gives you a little background on what was going on at the time. But there are issues that touch me in the realm of my principles. And when my principles are involved, I will come to the aid of anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care about race, religion, sexual orientation. If people are being mistreated by forces greater than they contend with, and there's anything I can do if it's only raising my voice, that's what I did the whole time I was in the legislature. This is just one example. I said I wouldn't editorialize much, but I had to give that little background. It will be a spot on the, what I'm talking about on the history of humanity as long as human beings walk on this earth. Mr. Reagan is an individual whom people have tried to excuse for every manner of insensitivity and bad judgment. This latest instance is a matter which cannot be overlooked, which cannot be overlooked, ignored, and which I think places a responsibility on all elected officials as well as citizens and groups who are aware of the seriousness of this situation to try to bring about a measure of rectification by persuading the president through any means and by any means available to cancel this visit to a cemetery where are buried some of the worst criminals of the Nazi regime. As pointed out in the resolution, the Waffen, that's the military arm, the fighting arm, the Waffen SS were not typical soldiers. They were not combatants. They were the elite corps whose responsibility was to operate death camps, preside over the slaughter, literally, of men, women, babies at Auschwitz and Treblinka, which was strictly a killer camp. They had Dr. Mengele, who misused the term doctor and his knowledge as one trained in medicine to conduct some of the most inhumane experiments on human beings imaginable. He was called the angel of death, and he is being pursued even today. He worked under the auspices of the SS. They had what was called the Institute for Racial, Biological, and Anthropological Investigation, which was referred to as the best medical center of the Third Reich. But this was an institute dedicated to the proving of falsehoods and human experimentation was conducted to try to buttress these falsehoods. Here is what Reagan said in trying to justify his visit to this cemetery, and this is his remark relative to the members of the Waffen SS. He's talking about the ones who operated the death camps. Quote, the SS tried to use, oh, wait a minute. I jumped past it. Those young men, meaning the SS, are victims of Nazism also. Even though they were fighting in the German uniform, drafted into service to carry out the hateful wishes of the Nazis, they were victims just as surely as the victims in the concentration camps, unquote. Would you say that the slave master who beat black men, women, and even children bloody were the victims of slavery also? Continuing, the SS tried to use other means of slaughtering Jews. Senator Hefner, he was one who was opposed to what I was doing, before they arrived on the gas chambers. They would line them up along trenches and shoot them in the back of the neck. It was determined that this kind of killing placed too great a psychological strain on the SS officers who had to do it because it created an identification between them and the victim. They saw the kneeling, unyielding victim and it was too hard for them. So they had to develop another stratagem. They took trucks and sealed them hermetically, bands, and put the Jews in the back of them. And as they transported them to the place of burial, carbon monoxide was piped into the truck. When they reached the place of burial, they had died. The bodies would be stacked against the door where the people tried to get out. When you die in this fashion, you lose control of your bodily functions. 
the sight and the odors were such that again, it was felt to be too horrible for the SS to bear. So then why didn't they stop killing the Jews in that fashion? So they used their ingenuity to put together a type of gas and the gas chambers, which would separate the executioners from those they were about to kill. They even made the Jews participate in the execution of other Jews. And these are the people that Mr. Reagan said are as much victims as those they were killing. In justifying his trip, Reagan said, and these statements were made at press conferences, quote, and I felt since the German people and very few alive that remember even the war and certainly none of them who were adults and participating in any way, they have a feeling and a guilt feeling that's been imposed upon them. And I just think it's unnecessary. In other words, no Germans should re regret what the Nazis had done in their name. Unquote. 12 million Germans of the Nazi era are alive in Germany today. Mr. Reagan is notorious for misstating history and outright lying to back a position which never should have been taken in the first place. To pretend in a situation as serious as this, that the man should be unchallenged and allowed to do this act of visiting that cemetery, which can be taken by the rest of the world as representing what the American people feel, would be a, this would be a terrible mistake on the part of the legislature to not make a comment, a comment or take a position. We cannot allow it to go by. These SS individuals were thugs and criminals of the worst order. Suppose Mr. Reagan were to lay a wreath on the grave of Al Capone or Legs Diamond or John Dillinger. They were not criminals of the magnitude of the SS. To give you an idea of their philosophy, I want to read you what SS Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler said when he was addressing some of his SS comrades on October 4th, 1943. Quote, I also want to speak very frankly about a very important subject. Among ourselves, we will discuss it openly. In public, however, we must never mention it. I mean the evacuation of the Jews, the extermination of the Jewish people, this is something that is easy to talk about, unquote. Then quoting further, the Jewish people will be exterminated, says every member of the party. This is clear. This is our program, the elimination, the extermination of the Jews. We will do this. And then they come to you, 80 million good Germans, and each one has his, quote, decent Jew, unquote. Naturally, all the rest are pigs, but this particular Jew is first rate. Not one of those who talk this way has seen the bodies. Not one has been on the spot. Most of you, he's talking about the ones who carry it out. Most of you know what it is to see a pile of 100 or 500 or 1,000 bodies. To have stuck it out and at the same time, barring exceptions caused by human weakness, to have remained decent. This is what has made us tough. This is a glorious page in our history, which never has and never will be written, but it was. S.S. Reichsfuhrer Hip Heinrich Himmler made that statement. One of those types whom Mr. Reagan say is as much a victim as the ones his SS presided over in seeing that they were slaughtered. In 1935, the Jews were deprived of all citizenship rights in Germany. What Mr. Reagan is doing is encouraging an upswing of Nazism in this country of the United States. A group called the Covenant, the Sword and the Arm of the Lord, another called the Order, there is a semi-religion called the Aryan Nations, all based around the principles of Nazism. Nazism has as, it, as its centerpiece the notion of a master race. Inferior peoples could be destroyed. The first step in the final solution of the Jewish problem was the ghettoization 
where they transported Jews to certain areas from which they could not leave. Now, this is me speaking on the floor of the legislature to white senators, and I'm the anti-Semite, according to the Jews in Nebraska. Continuing my speaking on the floor of the legislature. Then the ghettos were liquidated and the Jews were transported to concentration and death camps. They did forced labor in the munitions factories of the Krupp family. They did other things under compulsion that were designed to strengthen the machinery of the Third Reich that would destroy them. People of all nationalities, races, and religions fought to bring an end to the Third Reich. There are bitter memories. Those memories should never be erased. What happened during that terrible period in history may not happen again on the same scale, but the attitude that led to it continues with us today. It would be a terrible thing if Mr. Reagan's action would be used as a basis to pretend, as people pretended during the time that the Holocaust was occurring, that it really didn't occur at all. It really was not that bad if it did occur. There were not crematoria. There were not gas chambers. These are figments of people's Im overactive imaginations. I hope that you will support this resolution so that we will not have to justify this period in American history as some are trying to justify Auschwitz, Bergen, Belkenwald, Dachau, Theresienstadt, Treblinka, and the other death camps. The least we can do is try to persuade the president to not make this inexcusable blunder. Another senator, Senator Harris. Mr. President and members of the legislature, I rise to support the resolution. I have traveled throughout the state in the past three weeks, sp spent time in my hometown in McCook, Nebraska, visited with business people, with people from all walks of life, and I have yet to meet a person who thinks that the president's decision in regard to this resolution and what it, what it covers was anything but ill-advised, and I plan to support the resolution. Because of the phrase, which is not trying to dictate to the president or to the federal government, but to let him know how we feel about this decision and that is the phrase that says, quote, whereas the ill-advised act of the president may be misperceived by the rest of the world as representing the will of the American people and may appear to be a pardoning of all unish, unpunished war criminals. Then the senator said, I, for one, do not want the world to see a misperception as to my feeling and the feeling of the average Nebraska. I urge the support of the resolution Thank you. And I'm not going to read the opposition spoken by other senators because it's not meant to condemn them as they should be condemned. That's not the purpose of this. It's to show the kinds of things that I felt the responsibility and obligation to do while being condemned by the very people whose case I was arguing. And I had spoken and taken a stronger position than Jews in Nebraska or anywhere else, probably. Then Senator Vara Johnson spoke. Mr. Speaker and members of the body, because we have very little time left on this resolution, I will make my remarks quite brief. I support the resolution. I've read the resolution carefully. By the way, I'm not reading it because I don't want to take too much time. I support the resolution. I've read the resolution carefully. I think the language is very strong language. It is not the kind of language that I traditionally would use. I think on the other hand, that dealing with an issue as fraught with meaning, significance and consequence as is this question. And the issue is a very simple, is very simple, a visit by the president of the United States to a cemetery that contains the bodies of a number of men who went beyond the pale in wartime to brutalize the hapless people, to exterminate, to kill, to torture, to mutilate, to destroy is too much. Our president is making a mistake to visit the cemetery. And yes, even though Nebraska legislative resolutions are not read in Washington, DC, 
are ignored in Washington, D.C., this legislature does represent a legitimate voice of the people of our state to reflect sentiment and feeling. If it did not, we would not do all the basketball resolutions. We would not do all the commemorative resolutions. We would not be still. We would be still on all of those issues. But because we are a legitimate voice, it is important that we raise our voice to express our own feeling and sentiment on what, in my opinion, is a true mistake in judgment. None of us should ever forget what took place in Germany and in Poland to the Jews and to the gypsies and to the halt and the lame. The moment we forget it, we forget about what is taking place in Cambodia. We forget about what the Khmer Rouge has done in Cambodia. We forget about genocide that goes on and on and on. It is important that we as a people not let it be forgotten how even the most civilized and advanced of nations can one day be reduced to barbarism. It is important that that be remembered. And that is why the resolution is an important one to vote on and I will support it. The chair recognizes Senator LeBeds. No response. She apparently didn't hear that she was being recognized. Then I was recognized again. The chair recognizes Senator Chambers. Mr. Chairman and members of the legislature, as with many things that I undertake to do, which I will receive, for which I will receive opposition, nobody can say that a statement contained in the resolution is untrue. Not one statement is untrue. When Senator DeCamp talked about it being a political statement, I am neither Democrat nor a Republican, but there are highly pl placed Republicans in Washington who are very upset about what the president is doing, who are pointing out that it is a blunder, not just political, Senator DeCamp, but moral. It is a moral blunder also. I cannot tell Senator Beitler, another one who spoke against the resolution, how many people are buried at Bitburg. But one thing that he and everybody else knows, it was a staging area by the Germans for the Battle of the Bulge. It is also known that the SS did slaughter little babies, pregnant women, old people, and all those that we say we have a concern for. To parse sentences, to try to closely define words in a rhetorical exercise, to pretend that what really happened is not really as serious as it was, indicates the old business as usual attitude that existed while the Holocaust was occurring, that allowed churches, political parties, organizations supposedly given to humanitarian purposes to look the other way and say it is not really happening. When Senator Beitler said there were many German soldiers who did not know what was really happening in terms of what the SS may have been doing in these camps, it is reminiscent of the attempt, attempt to excuse everybody who lived in Germany at that time by saying nobody knew. Every German soldier knew what the SS was, knew what the SS was doing, knew about the death camps and so forth. Yet the Crystal Night was something that everybody in Germany knew about when they smashed Jewish synagogues, smashed their businesses, burned their religious works, excuse me, I'm telling you, in 1935, they were denied citizenship rights. They were made to sew a big J against a yellow background on their left shoulder blade to signify what they were. They could not sell their property. They could not speak to non-Jews. And these kind of things were occurring, and people understand that, and people knew it. To say that those who lived at that time didn't understand is to pretend. It would be like saying during slavery, white people who lived didn't know black people were enslaved. It would be like the old German who is supposed to be talking to a little boy, excuse me, when a long black car with curtains 
over the windows, went by slowly. And the man asked the little boy, do you know who's sitting in that car? The little boy said, no. And the old man told him, sitting in that car is a man who talked to a man who heard of Hitler. Nobody really knew anything, business as usual. When Eichmann said, give me some trucks and I will give you some Jews to America, Americans said, no dice. And John Kennedy's father was one of them. No trading trucks from America to save Jews in Germany. When they asked that the compliment of those people who were allowed to immigrate to this country from Western Europe, which was not filled, be filled by Jewish children, the American government said, no dice. This is a serious issue. The president is the one who has dealt with it in a careless, shallow fashion. Contrary to me trying to embarrass the president, I'm trying to prevent the president from embarrassing this country. Contrary to what Senator Hefner said about sticking our nose where it doesn't belong, I have an obligation, Senator Hefner, in matters like this to take a position. I'm doing all that I can as a member of this legislature by offering this resolution. I remember the poem, no man is an island entire unto itself, each is a part of the main. And you know, seek not to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. We are always talking about the tragedies of others that have an effect on us, even if we were not directly and personally touched by it. The vote on this resolution gives each of us the opportunity to show where we stand on a matter such as this, and I'm going to tell you all something. I believe before it is over, the president is going to cancel that visit. Then remember what Senator DeCamp said. Remember what Senator Hefner said about this being a matter that we should just leave alone and allow everybody to be painted with the brush that the president would have us painted by. He is not God to me. He is a person who has made a gross error of judgment following the bad advice of narrow-minded, bigoted individuals and I think the legislature ought to go on record repudiating that kind of thing. If you can find anything in the resolution that is false, you ought to bring it to my attention, but you won't find a word in it, which is not true. Thank you, Senator Chambers, for your closing. The time is expiring within a minute. So the motion is to adopt the resolution. All those in favor, Senator Chambers, and I want to put everybody on record. I would like a call of the House. President, the call of the House has been requested, and everybody had to come from their offices and everywhere and be back to the chamber. A call of the House has been requested. The question is, shall the House come under call? All those in favor, vote aye, oppose, nay. Record the vote, clerk. Clerk, 15 A's, zero nays to go under call. The call is under, the House is under call. I ask for a roll call vote. Clerk call the roll. The vote as found on page 1853 of the Legislative Journal. This is on my resolution to adopt it. 18 A's, 18 nays, Mr. President, on adoption of the resolution. It takes 25 to perform any official act of the legislature because there are 49 senators. 25 constitutes a majority. The president, the motion fails. The resolution is not adopted. There was another senator who was very upset. His name was Lauren Schmidt. The chair represents Senator Schmidt. This is after other business intervened. Mr. President and members of the legislature, I filed a motion to reconsider the action on LR 97 for several reasons. First of all, I want to explain that I did not vote for the resolution and why. I believe that so often we deal with these issues in a superficial manner, in a manner almost lightheartedly, and in a manner which does not fit the seriousness of the situation. Secondly, I think that sometimes we discuss an issue such as the one which is outlined in LR 97 in an attempt to take our minds away from of the very real issues which face us today. It is always easier to reminisce about the past and to chastise and criticize and condemn ourselves 
for the failures of the past than it is to own up to the failures that we commit on an everyday basis. So there's a certain amount of satisfaction in passage of a resolution such as this. And he went on to explain why, despite all that, he thought that the matter should come back before the body. And the only one who can make a reconsideration motion is the one who's on the winning side or one who did not vote. Senator Schmidt continues, he was told by the chair he has one minute. I'm convinced that the president of the United States meant no harm by his visit to the cemetery at Bitburg. That does not excuse the fact that it was an error in judgment on someone's part. Abraham Lincoln once said, and I paraphrase, stand by your friend when he was right, but abandon him when he is wrong. I do not mean abandonment in the literal sense, but to leave that individual when he is wrong. I believe that we must convey to the president that we think it is wrong, just as wrong for us to be silent as it was to make the decision by the president in the first place. And I want to say again, and I'll have more to say about it later, the time will come when those of us who today have the ability and are in the position to do something about it may be as severely criticized for our inaction to help the people who are starving to death in other parts of the world. As today, the press, the editorial writers, the politicians are critical of Nazi Germany. Senator Chambers was called on to speak because it's a new motion that's before the House, Senator Schmidt's motion. Mr. Chairman and members of the legislature, Senator Schmidt made some very sobering comments and it would be probably easier for me if I follow my emotional bent to talk about the issues he raised relative to Africa and the starving people, but the purpose of the resolution is to deal with an error in judgment that has been committed by the president and which he seems at this point intent to carry through on. I was asked by one or two senators how this whole Bitburg trip came about in the first place. None of us have all the details, but a little background you can gather here and there. This economic summit was scheduled for June. Helmut Kohl, I called him Conrad Kohl. Helmut Kohl, the chancellor of West Germany, is going to face an election around the middle of May. There is an opponent rising who may be able to serious challenge Kohl in the future. So Kohl wants to put a stop to it. To buttress his political fortunes, he prevailed on Reagan to work to change the date of the economic su uh, summit to a date prior to the election. And they established a visit to take place at this particular cemetery. And as I pointed out, there was a missile site near there. There is no way that anybody can say that Cole and his advisors did not know about the SS soldiers buried at Bitburg. What Cole wants from Reagan is not reconciliation. What Cole wants is political backing for the election coming up a few days after Reagan's visit to Bitburg. And that is why Cole is so adamant on keeping Reagan on his knees and telling him to ignore the wishes of the American people relative to this visit. Congress and the Senate, both political parties, have tried to prevail on the president to change his mind and not do this dastardly thing. But the issue is one of politics with Cole. He doesn't care what becomes of Reagan. His voters are in Germany. What people need to realize is that those SS individuals were not soldiers. Waffen means armed. They were the armed SS. They were the guards of the concentration camps. It was the SS leaders who put together the final solution of the Jewish problem. Some people cannot envision what a vicious regime the Third Reich was. They didn't just do it to the Jews. They tortured, put into slave labor, and starved Russian prisoners of war. They violated the Hague and Geneva Conventions by forcing prisoners of war to work for IG Farben, that was a chemical company, and his chemical plants, and for the Krupp firms in the making of munitions and arms, 
which were violations of the Geneva and Hague Conventions, but it made no difference to Nazi Germany. They can't say, as some people want to, that German people did not know when they would bring the Russian prisoners into Germany after they had worked them almost to death and wanted to take them to a place of execution. To execute prisoners of wars was also a war crime. And these were Russian who were fighting against the Nazis. So the Russians were not always on the wrong side of the ledger. But to continue, many of these Russians, prisoners of war, were too weak even to walk to that place of execution. So they were shot on the spot in the face of all the German populace. There was a man named Otto Ohlendorf, an SS officer who ran Auschwitz for a period of time. Speaker, let me know I had one more minute to speak on this term this time. He pointed out that they were to destroy these Jews in secret and they were burning up 6,000 a day. He said the foul and nauseating stench of perpetually burning flesh permeated the whole area and everybody in the surrounding community knew that exterminations were occurring. They cannot say people didn't know. They can't say Williams people don't know what the SS was. They can't say Cole doesn't know. But because what Cole does know is what makes this whole trip such a reprehensible affair. What makes this whole trip such a reprehensible affair? Knowing what the SS is, he is insisting that Reagan pay a visit to that tainted altar. My time, Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to run over, but I will try to speak again. Some others spoke. Then it came to a speaker named Jackie Smith. Senator Smith, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to relinquish my time to Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to read to you all a little bit from a document that surfaced in Nuremberg, written by a Dr. Yeager, who was the doctor of the Krupp slaves. This is what he wrote. Upon my first visit to the Krupp plant, now he's talking about 600 Jewish women who were brought from Buchenwald concentration camp to slave labor in the Krupp plant, munitions plant. Upon my first visit, I found these females suffering from open, festering wounds and other diseases. There were no medical supplies. They had no shoes. Their hair was shorn. The camp was surrounded by barbed wire and closely guarded by SS guards. One could not enter the barracks without being attacked by fleas. I got large boils from them. Then he went on to look at the Russian and the Polish workers who were doing slave labor for Krupp. Quote, after speaking of the inadequate clothing, inadequate water and toilet facilities, he said, quote, sanitary conditions were atrocious. At Kramer Plotz, only 10 children's toilets were available for 1,200 inhabitants. Excretion, that's bowels and urine, contaminated the entire floors of these lavatories. Workers were afflicted with spotted fever, lice, the carrier of the disease, together with countless fleas, bugs, and other vermin, tortured the inhabitants of these camps. At times, the water supply was cut off perhaps of from eight to 14 days. Some who think that the SS only went after the Nazis should remember, wait a minute, should listen to this from an eyewitness. And it was in the Nuremberg documents about the murder of American, Dutch, and French flyers who had been captured by the SS. Quote, the 47 officers were led barefooted to the quarry, stone quarry. This was the Mauthausen concentration or extermination camp. At the bottom of the steps, the guards loaded stones on the backs of these poor men, and they had to carry them to the top. 
Now this included captured American flyers. The first Germany, the first journey was made with the stones weighing about 60 pounds and accompanied by blows. The second journey, the stones were still heavier and whenever the poor wretches sank under their burden, they were kicked and hit with a bludgeon. In the evening, 21 bodies were strewn along the road. The 26 others died the following morning, unquote. They had what they called groups, extermination groups that were attached to the German army and they were to go along and kill up any Jews that they could find, women and children included. And one fellow, Otto Ohlendorf, that I said was at Auschwitz, was not there. That was an error. He was the one who was the head of this group. And in his testimony at Nuremberg, he was talking about the action in the Ukraine when he was attached to the 11th Army and how they killed 90,000 men, women, and children, not combatants, shot them down. And this is what he said in response to some questions from a Russian judge at the Nuremberg trials. The Russian judge, and you see that the Russians are like the devils now, quote, for what reason were the children massacred? Ohlendorf, quote, the order was that the Jewish population should be totally exterminated, unquote. Russian judge, were all the Jewish children murdered? Ohlendorf, yes. And he calmly told how they would go to a village, round up the people, make them strip off their clothing, all of their valuables, put them in trucks, take them to a ditch where the executions were to occur. And this is what he said. Then they were shot kneeling or standing by the firing squads in a military manner and the corpses thrown into the ditch. Listen to the perverseness that develops in these situations. Quote, I never permitted the shooting by individuals, but ordered that several of the men should shoot at the same time in order to avoid direct personal responsibility. In other words, six of us would shoot a man, then each one could say, I'm not responsible. And he's giving this testimony during the Nuremberg trials, war crime trials. Other group leaders demanded that the victims lie down flat on the ground and be shot through the nape of the neck. I did not approve of these methods, unquote. The American prosecutor asked, why not? And this was the response, because both for the victims and for those who carried out the executions, it was psychologically an immense burden to bear. You get that? And he presided over the murder of 90,000 men, women, and babies in this fashion. Speaker of the legislature, one minute. Senator Chambers continuing. There was a similar killing at Dubno, and at this place, a construction man had a company, and he mentioned how all of these people had been brought to these pits where they had the huge earthen mounds, and he heard a lot of firing. So when he stepped around the mound, he saw this huge mass grave about two-thirds full, and there were about a thousand people in it. They made these people walk on top of the bodies and then the SS man who was sitting on the edge of the pit with his feet dangling over with a Tommy gun on his knees began to shoot the people down. Not all of them were killed by the shooting, but as others were piled in, in the same fashion, suffocation, most of them were bleeding from the neck and the head would be by way of which they died. Chambers, this was the SS's operation and their job. Then Senator DeCamp spoke against the resolution. Then Senator Schmidt spoke. Mr. President, only briefly, then I will yield the rest of my time to Senator Chambers. I'd just like to say this, that I support President Reagan. I support him wholeheartedly as an individual. I support him when he is right. I disagree with him when he's wrong. I believe he is wrong. 
I believe that for me to not say that I think he is wrong is an error. You cannot by any stretch of the imagination compare the men of the SS with the ordinary German soldier. Time after time after time, if you read the books of history, you read the adjective, the hated SS, the feared SS. You do not read the SS. It was their job to spread fear, terror, death among the German people, particularly with the Jewish people. But again, not only the Jewish people, many other people died. Poles, Russians, non-Jewish Germans, also who disagreed with the regime. So I think it is important that we do not forget. I'd like to yield the rest of my time to Senator Chambers. And I'd like to get word from my boss. How much time do I have left? I guess I was told to continue. Senator Chambers, Mr. Chairman and members of the legislature, we all know that what happened at the hands of the Nazis was like unlike anything that had happened in history up to that period or since. Senator DeCamp knows that SS is short for Schildstaffel or Special Guard. They initially were Hitler's special personal bodyguard. Then they became the elite corps of the Nazi militia. Then they became those who guarded and operated the death and concentration camps. Not all of them engaged in combat at all. That's not even what they were for. One of the main jobs they had was to suppress opposition to the Nazis within Germany. Senator DeCamp, as well as in captured lands, they committed atrocities against German people also. If they were out of step with the Nazis, they had to go when the wagon came. But let me read you something that was happening with private enterprise and see if you come across, if you see something similar to this in this or any other country during wartime. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was competitive bidding for the furnace contract at Auschwitz and an LA TOF company, T-O-P-F company, won the contract, the furnace contract. This is what he wrote in a letter dated February 12, 1943, and he addressed it to the construction office of the SS and Auschwitz police. See, I read history. I still read it. Malcolm X said, history is the study best capable of rewarding our efforts. This is the letter. With reference to crematoria two and three for, for the camp, we acknowledge receipt of your order for five triple furnaces, including two electric elevators for raising the corpses and one emergency elevator. A practical installation for stoking coal was also ordered and one for transporting ashes, unquote. Isn't that sterile and businesslike? Then the C.H. Corey, K-O-R-I company, who had built furnaces for Dachau and Lublin wrote this letter, and these were produced at the Nuremberg trials. Quote, following our verbal discussion regarding the delivery of equipment of simple construction for the burning of bodies, we are submitting plans for our perfected cremation ovens, which operate with coal and which have hitherto given full satisfaction we suggest two crematory furnaces for the building plan, but we advise you to make further inquiries to make sure that two ovens will be sufficient. Sufficient for your requirements. We guarantee the effectiveness of the cremation ovens as well as their durability, the use of the best material and our faultless workmanship. Awaiting your further word, we will be at your service, Heil Hitler. The SS had doctors too who conducted experiments. They wanted to do some scientific measurements of the skulls of people they called Jewish Bolshevik commissars. They had said they were indicative of repulsive subhumans. To carry out this work, a professor hurt H-I-R-T said they would need bodies. 
but before these Jews were killed, their skulls should be measured. Then they should be killed in a fashion that would not damage the heads. Then the physicians should sever the heads from the body and send them to Strasbourg in hermetically sealed tin cans. And this was done to women, men, systematically gassed, shot, starved, bludgeoned. And Senator DeCamp wants to say, this is the way wars are conducted. This is the way wars have been conducted. War, Senator Camp, as somebody said, is indeed hell. But what these people did went far beyond the pale that they were charged as criminals for what they did even during wartime. I haven't got too much more and I was given leave to go over my usual time. Senator Higgins, then Senator LeBeds. Senator Higgins, thank you, Mr. President. We are reminded often by the World Herald that this is a nonpartisan legislature. I find it ironic that a registered independent originally made this resolution, and today a registered Republican is asking for reconsideration of it because it failed in the past. I don't think anybody here that has any morals at all condones what was done in the Second World War when it comes to the atrocities. What I'm wondering about is if those atrocities were committed against nothing but Presbyterians or nothing but Episcopalians or only those who are Catholic or Methodist, would it matter as much to us since it, would have, uh, since it was atrocities committed upon Jews? I'm wondering if this entire body belonged to one religion, how this body would feel regardless of the political party that the president belongs to. If every one of us was a registered Republican, would this resolution ever have come up? Or if every one of us was a Democrat, would it have come up? But it was an independent that brought it up, a man who doesn't belong to either party. I think we're all missing the point. I think what it really is coming down to is politics and whether or not the resolution was offered originally to embarrass the president of the United States. I, for one, would not offer a resolution to do that because I realize how critical our situation is today internationally. Every day is critical. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is a critical situation anymore when we all have the horrors of nuclear war hanging over us and most of us try every day to forget that in a matter of seconds, our own city can be completely destroyed. I wish that we were all united. I don't know what is really in President Reagan's mind. I don't know if he was tricked by the Germans as Senator Chambers has spoken about and that he is really being used kind of as a political puppet and he, is not in, he was not informed at the time when he agreed to do this. I just feel that myself, I have to say, that I want to go on record as saying that I don't want to embarrass the president and whether he does it or not goes to Bitburg. I don't think he should feel any embarrassment over it. I think if there's any embarrassment, it has already come out in many of the newspapers in this country who have criticized him for it and who have urged him not to do it. I don't know if when Reagan made the decision to do this, he was the same president that campaigned for prayer in the schools. I really truthfully believe that Reagan was misinformed when he made the commitment that perhaps like many presidents in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, like Kennedy on the Bay of Pigs, I think Reagan probably had poor advisors or advisors that didn't really realize all that was going on. But I cannot turn my back today after listening to the debate and say, I did not understand the subject I'm going to vote for the reconsideration of this resolution, and I'm going to do it not to embarrass President Reagan. He has made his commitment. I guess he has to do it. I don't know how he would get out of it unless he'd suddenly get the flu or take a walk, as some of us do. And in this case, he can't. But I think it's important that we, as Nebraskans, go on record whether we're Republicans or Democrats, but I'm sincerely sorry that has come down to what really is a political issue and not a moral issue. So when I vote 
I'm not voting as a Democrat. I'm just voting as one who says, I object to paying honor to anyone who has committed these atrocities. Time is up, said the speaker, Senator Higgins. And I would do the same thing if we had American soldiers buried in a grave that had done the same thing. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Lebeds, then Senator Chambers. Senator Lebeds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As one who was a young girl of 20 or 21 during the war, I can recall when, because my mother came from Poland, Tarnow, Poland, and my father came from Krakow, our house was a very unhappy home because we were getting stories back of what was happening in Poland. And even today, when my sisters and brothers travel in Poland, one of the places that they want to go to is to see the ovens in Poland where many of our friends, my parents' friends and family were executed and then their bodies burned in the ovens. They have huge pictures all around the walls of what happened to those people. Now, when you have your husband overseas and you have your brothers in France and your parents worrying about what is happening to their relatives and their family in Poland, it certainly is a very unhappy time in the 40s for those of us who went through it. And I certainly did worry from day to day, not only for my own husband, but for my brothers and my relatives that were left in Poland. We had a lot of them. They're still, oh, they're still there, some of them today, but a lot of them were either killed during World War II or they lived and starved to death shortly after because they had no food. They are going through some trying times now too, but at least when we go over to Poland, we can be reminded of what happened there. And it is not a very pretty sight when they show you the pictures and the names of the people that were burned in the ovens in Poland. Thank you. And I would like to relinquish the rest of my time to Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers. I'm using Senator Lebez this time. Right now, the remainder of it, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to try to say it as clearly as I can. We're not talking about war where soldiers were fighting soldiers. We're talking about babies and women who had been herded into ghettos, literally within walls and forbidden to leave, then put in trucks and cattle cars and transported to gas chambers. That's what we're talking about. Speaker, one minute left on Senator Lebed's time. President Reagan is going to Bitburg to try to bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. His goals are not the same as Cole's. He has done more, Reagan has, to bring about divisiveness in this country than any other single act. When he kicked the farm representatives out of Washington when they went there, that didn't divide the country. When he broke the air traffic controllers union who supported him, that didn't divide the country. Am I to understand that all these veteran groups that are upset about this visit are Jews? Am I a Jew? I'm considered anti-Semitic by the Jews in this state, the most anti-Semitic person in this state. Just a few days ago, I was sent a copy of a publication by B'nai Brith, the Anti-Defamation League, telling what an anti-Semite I am, how contemptible I am, how terrible and vicious things that I say against Jews are. So here I stand. What do I gain from this? It is an issue that transcends what these Jews in Nebraska feel about me. It transcends whether you are a Democrat a Republican, black or white. We're talking about crimes against humanity, crimes committed against people because of what they were, not because of what they did. And when you can try to erase the seriousness or viciousness from a regime that attempted to destroy races of people because of what they were by saying they were trying to embarrass Reagan is one of the worst types of stratagems that can be utilized in a debate on an issue this serious. There are Republicans in the House and in the Senate 
who have condemned in stronger words than I have in that resolution what the president is about to do. His personal friend, who is the head of the United States Information Agency, said they are now talking about damage control in the Republican Party because the damage has definitely been done already. And now they've got to try to contain it if they can. And some Democrats who may be trying to play politics say they hope the president would make the trip and he will wound himself irreparably. This is not a political issue, although some are trying to cast it in those terms. I think it should be brought out that by coincidence, Bitburg is near one of the largest missile installations in Germany. It should be pointed out that Cole is one of the European leaders who is in favor of the deployment of American missiles. And this is one of the reasons given by Reagan's people why Reagan agreed to do this in the first place. And that Bitburg is significant because it is near the missile deployment site. He is not even talking about looking out at the crosses row upon row as in Flanders Field. He is not talking about people who died in glory and a glorious struggle or who were victimized by Nazism or nationalism. Reagan is talking about the deployment of missiles in Western Europe. He is talking about pulling Helmut Kohl's chestnuts out of the political fire. But regardless of what Kohl has in mind, regardless of what Reagan's advisors thought, thought they were going to achieve, the fact is that an issue has been placed squarely before everybody in this country, and we should say and do something about it. That which is within our power to do is offered to you with this resolution. Some months ago, Senator Lebeds brought you a resolution seeking that the legislature go on record in support of the efforts of the Polish people, and you responded. I came to you down through the years with at least two resolutions about the plight of black people in South Africa, and then a bill to try to do something to remedy that situation as much as we as a legislature can do. You responded favorably. Now we're talking about a situation the likes of which has never been du duplicated in history. And we always say we hope it won't happen again. And I hope you will respond this time. Remember, People are always saying what happened during the Holocaust should not be forgotten. This casual way that this issue is being discussed, the callous way it is being handled by the president indicates that the forgetting process is well along its way. I hope you will vote to reconsider this resolution and I hope you will vote to pass it. In years to come, I think it would be much better to look back and see that you took a position against the mistake that Mr. Reagan is making, rather than being on the side of saying you endorse it because some individual may be embarrassed. I'm nearing the end. Senator Schmidt, the one who offered the reconsideration motion, I think we should reconsider the resolution. It is not a disrespect to the president. It is because we respect the president and we respect the country. The speaker, one minute, Senator Schmidt. I think that we should express our concern for what is perceived and what is believed is an incorrect action. It happens frequently, but this is one of the most serious. We should not allow it to go unnoticed. I ask that the resolution be reconsidered. Speaker, Senator Schmidt was closing on reconsidering the motion and the resolution. All those in favor vote aye, oppose vote, vote no, have all voted. Senator Schmidt. Mr. President, very quickly, a call of the House and a roll call vote. S Speaker. The question is, shall the House go under call? All those in favor vote aye, oppose nay. Mr. Clerk, please read. 15 A's, no nays to go under call, Mr. President. The Speaker. The House is under call. Will all of you record your presence that are here and all those outside the chamber, please return to the chamber and record your presence. Look up to see if your green light is lit, please, and turn it on if it isn't. Like Senator Haberman, Senator DeCamp, Senator Eric. Okay, the question is the reconsideration of the resolution and a roll call vote has been asked for. The roll was called. 
those who voted to reconsider or take another vote on it, it passed 25 yes, 16 no. The motion is reconsidered. That means there will be another vote on the resolution itself. I'm just about through. Since the resolution was to be voted on again, and it was my resolution, I am the one who is to close on the issue. Mr. Chairman and members of the legislature, when I asked that people read the resolution, I meant just that they read it and not take Senator DeCamp's interpretation. If you read it, you know that what he gave as an interpretation is totally wrong based on what the resolution says. Now, as far as the people buried in Bitburg, there is another piece of misinformation DeCamp gave, but I don't think it was intentional. And then I gave the number of people who are acknowledged to be members of the SS, which was larger than what DeCamp had admitted. I continued. I hope that there will be at least 24 who will join me in voting to adopt this resolution. And you should keep in mind that Congress, the House and the Senate, with the help of many Republicans, have told the president very strongly that he should not do this thing. The Senate and the House did it representing what they perceived the will of the American public to be. The legislature at the state level should do nothing less. So I hope you will vote for this resolution. Speaker, you have heard the closing. The question is the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor vote, vote aye, opposed nay. Have you all voted that care to? Please vote if you care to. Please vote if you care to. Senator Chambers. I will ask for a call of the House. Speaker Nickel. Okay, a call of the House has been called. All those in favor of going under call, vote aye. Record, Mr. Clerk. 20 ayes, no ayes, because some of the senators had left again. Speaker, the House is under call. Please record your presence. Those outside the chamber, please return and record your presence. Many of you are in your desks and have not looked up to see if your green light is shining. Thank you. Please look up to see if your green light is shining. Senator Haberman, Senator Hall, Senator Cal Carson. Senator Chambers, did you ask for a roll call vote? Senator Chambers, is everybody here? Speaker Nickel, yes. Senator Chambers, yes, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Senator N Nickel, okay. A roll call vote, and the question is the adoption of the resolution. The roll call vote was taken. 23 ayes, 16 nays. It takes 25 to pass it. The motion fails. It fell two votes short. And that was what was done that inglorious, shameful day in the Nebraska legislature when a black man who was excoriated, condemned, called all kind of negative things by Jewish people in Nebraska, whose national organization had put out a document against Senator Chambers. That same Senator Chambers was the one who brought this resolution to tell the president of the United States that this legislature thinks he should not visit that cemetery where SS soldiers were buried. SS troops who conducted the death camps destroying as many Jews as they can. My time is up. And as the canary who was told that the door to the cage was ajar, said, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching the Ernie Chambers Show. If you'd like to make suggestions, email us at ewcfacts at gmail.com. That's ewcfacts at gmail.com. This has been an EWC Communication Production.